Motorola is not a name you associate with the very best phones out there, but it has been making some of the most successful and most loved affordable phones out there, the Moto G series. Hello guys, my name is Vic with Phone Arena and now in 2019 the Moto G series returned with the brand new Moto G7 family of phones and there is all four of these siblings. On entry level, dirt cheap Moto G7 Play, slightly more expensive and battery centric Moto G7 Power, then the G7, the star of the show with the best price to performance ratio and finally the Moto G7 Plus. Unfortunately, this is the only one that will not be sold in the USA. So what is special about each one of them and how do they differ? Let's take a deeper look. Now in terms of design, these Motorola's share a similar overall styling, but differ when you take a closer look. The base Moto G7 Play model stands out with its textured plastic body that does not feel as smooth and premium as the other phones in the lineup, so you can easily tell it apart. It is also the smallest one, with a 5.7 inch display versus a 6.2 inch screen on the others. And that might actually be a plus for those who value a compact device. What's not so great about it is the strikingly big bezels are all around the sides of the phone. One smaller thing we also notice on the G7 Play is that this vibration motor feels wimpier than on other G7 phones. The Moto G7 Power switches the plastic for glass, which gives it a more premium, solid feel. This model is also clearly the biggest and bulkiest of them all. The G7 Power measures 0.37 inches thick, while the others in the series measure around 0.31. Now the G7 and the G7 Plus basically look kind of identical. These two are considered the more premium models in the family and unlike the previous two, here you don't have a regular notch, but instead you get a, a tinier, less intrusive teardrop notch. All four phones feature a USB-C port for charging, a 3.5mm headphone jack and a micro SD card for expandable storage. All are neat little conveniences. Now the fingerprint scanner on all four new Motorola's is placed on the back, with the M logo printed right on the sensor. It's a clever way to put some extra branding, and registering your finger with this sensor is fast and easy, just as it is to actually use the scanner in real life. We had zero issues with it, so good job Motorola. Still the Moto G7 screens are some very decent looking LCDs. Actually with one exception, the G7 Play which looks washed out and just bad, all other three models have decent looking displays. There are also differences in resolution, the G7 and the G7 Plus feature full HD screens while the Play and the Power have lower resolution 720p HD displays. We also notice that the G7 Plus gets significantly brighter than all other G7 phones and its display is much easier to see outdoors. It's clearly the best one in the series. All four new Motorola's ship with the latest Android 9 Pie on board and the light Moto skin on top adds a few useful gestures and a few cool widgets without ruining the clean Android styling. And that's a great thing because these new Motos feel very zippy and nimble. You also have typical Moto additions like the double chop gestures to quickly open the camera, the wave to see the lock screen notifications and more. One of the biggest upgrades with the new Moto G7 series compared to last year's Moto G6 is in the processor. Last year's models shipped with a Snapdragon 4 series chip, while this year you get a much more powerful Snapdragon 6 series processor. Another welcome addition to the G7 and the G7 Plus is that the base models of these phones now come with 64 gigs of storage, which is much better than the 32 gig options from last year. The G7 Play and the G7 Power, however, have only 32 gigs on board. For connectivity, LTE is what you expect in even the cheapest phones these days. And LTE is what you get on all four Moto G7 phones. What's more is that even the most affordable G7 Play features a ton of LTE bands and is not likely to disappoint the global traveler. Another curious detail is that only the Plus supports NFC, while the other three models do not have NFC connectivity. Ok, let's talk cameras, as this is the big question that most people have for every affordable phone. And it's always hard to find a great camera in an affordable phone. So how about the G7 series? Well, you have dual cameras on the G7 and the Plus, and you have support for 4K video on all of the models. But what about the image quality? Well, photo quality is quite decent during the day, but not very good in low light. The Moto G7 Plus particularly has much higher amount of detail than the rest 
and photos from it look sharp and clearly the best in the series. The G7 and the G7 Power do well, but are not quite as sharp, while the G7 Play is just not a very good camera, as images from it turn out with blurry details and a lot of noise. Now, 4K video, you have it on all phones, but it's not well stabilized on, on these Motorola's and there are troubles with the exposure on all four, so we can't recommend these for video enthusiasts, but of course for those who occasionally shoot some videos, oh, the quality is acceptable. And in terms of sound and call quality, we have had no issues. Calls come out loud and sufficiently clear, while the loudspeakers on the G7 Plus, the G7 and the power model are quite loud and the quality is quite good. Next up, looking at battery life, among these four new Motorola's, there is one extraordinary one. The G7 Power comes with a 5000 mAh battery, much larger than the 3000 mAh cells installed on all other G7 models. Now combine the large battery of the Power with its efficient processor and HD display, and it's no surprise then that the G7 Power lasts longer than the other phones in the series. What was a shock, however, was not just that this phone was the longest lasting among these four, it was also the longest lasting phone we have tested, ever. Motorola says you can expect three full days and we feel that those expectations are justified with this phone. Now the affordable Moto G7 Play also scores an excellent 11 hours and a half on our battery test, while the G7 and the G7 Plus actually score lower than their cheaper siblings, but still have very solid battery numbers and will last you through even those longer days. Another thing that surprised us was charging speeds. The Moto G7 Plus comes with a 27W Moto Turbo Power Charger, and it was the fastest phones we have ever tested, to go from zero to a full 100% charge. It does this in just around 50 minutes. The Moto G7 also charges up quickly, taking just an hour and a half for a full charge, but it's nowhere nearly as fast as the G7 Plus. Okay, these phones are all about prices and affordability, so here is how the prices break down. Clearly these are cheap phones, and here is how we feel about each one of them in a nutshell, just to round things up. Now first the Moto G7 Play. The Moto G7 Play unfortunately makes way too many compromises to be a good daily driver. The plastic build, the big bezels, the low quality display and the low quality camera are the deal breakers here. Not recommended. The Moto G7 Power is a big and bulky phone with a low res display, but also the best battery life we've ever seen on a phone and that alone is a remarkable achievement. Now the Moto G7 at its $300 price is a good value for the money and while it doesn't push the envelope with some unthinkable specs like say the Pocophone F1, it's a safe and reliable choice. Performance is zippy, the software is clean, the display is decent and the camera can take some good shots during the day. This is a budget workhorse that we can easily recommend in 2019. And finally the G7 Plus. G7 Plus will not be available in the US and that's a bit of a shame because it's better than the G7. We appreciate the brighter screen, the sharper and better performing camera and the faster chip inside. Altogether this is another easy recommendation for those who can find it. So overall Moto is not doing anything extraordinary, but it does not need to. The new Moto phones are an evolution in terms of design with thinner bezels and more stylish looks, they are faster with the Snapdragon 6 chips and they work reliably. All of that makes them a winner in our books. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and find it valuable. Hit that thumbs up button if you did, subscribe to see more from us in the future and I will see you in the next one.